UC Think, Think Think, and support breast cancer research. Conference football on FoxSportsSouthwest.com coming to you live from Blackwater Draw, New Mexico. We are halfway between Clovis and Portales. Portales, New Mexico, the home, of course, of uh, Star Conference Football on FoxSportsSouthwest.com. Uh, Chris Needham broadcasting live from Greyhound Stadium. We're at Blackwater Draw, New Mexico. That is between Portales and Clovis, New Mexico, on the plains between those two cities. The reason I'm bringing that out is because we are wide open here, and the major factor in this, in this game today is going to be a massive wind coming out of the north. They're talking about tornadoes in Texas and Oklahoma, a snowstorm in Denver in the next couple of days. That front is resulting in a big wind. It's going to be a factor today. Eastern New Mexico at 3-3. Three three. Texas A&M Kingsville, the Javelinas coming in at 2-4. and four. Javelinas have lost four in a row, and uh, Eastern New Mexico has won two in a row. On paper, it looks like a good setup for the homestanding Greyhounds to get a victory. But... The Javelinas have beaten Eastern New Mexico five times in a row, and they dominate this series. We'll talk about it as we go into the broadcast. The Javelinas and the Greyhounds coming up on FoxSportsSouthwest.com. Needham back with you live, and we are uh, on the plains, as we said, of eastern New Mexico. It is a battle between the Greyhounds and the Javelinas. Major storyline of this whole situation would be an overall series. The Javelinas lead the series, Texas A&M University Kingsville, and as we see the Greyhounds in their green uniforms, they'll be in the dark. The Javelinas going to your right as you look on the monitor now, they are the visiting team in the white with the blue pants. Javelinas in this series, they lead it 24 to five and the Javelinas have won five straight. Last time Eastern New Mexico got a victory in this series, Eastern New Mexico defeated Texas A&M Kingsville in 2006, 37 to 14. Javelinas were six and six last year and they ended up going to a postseason bowl game. Our Lone Star Conference, Kansas Bowl, up in Topeka, Kansas. They lost up there in a wild shootout to Emporia State. As you see, the Greyhounds, the homestanding Eastern New Mexico team that has uh, won their last two ball games, they will kick off. The wind is a crosswind. This field runs uh, east and west. And for the Javelinas, Joe Crow on the kickoff return. He had an 87-yard kickoff return for a touchdown last week. Kingsville on offense first. Caleb Bedford, a redshirt freshman, will get the start at the quarterback. Cornelia Shackefler has just been an amazing running back. 58 carries, 314 yards this year. Robert Armstrong, one of the top wide receivers, not only in the Lone Star Conference, but in the entire nation, NCAA Division II football. So Bedford, the freshman, 6'3", 210 pounder out of Houston, will get the snap from a split backfield, powerhouse backfield as you see Bedford on the initial handoff, Shackelford to the right side. And off the bottom of the pile, the initial tackle for the ball game, Tanner Melson for the Greyhounds uh, making the stop. 
Bedford will check from the sidelines. They will run more of a wide open spread offense. The Greyhounds under second year head coach Josh Lynn have gone to more of a uh, option set offense. Bedford again still getting his signs. They have split and wide open offense now with one receiver left and two right. Initial pass completion of the ball game to uh, C.J. Griggs, the junior out of Cedar Lane, Texas. Griggs, forward progress. They'll spot it at about the 32. That is enough for the initial first down of the ball game. For Kingsville, you see their starters there. Bedford, Shackelford, number 34. Musa Mahmoud, a wide receiver, number 12. Whitlow also will spread out. No huddle, they try to move up and down the field quickly. They're at two and four, they've lost four in a row and continue to really struggle. That is Shackleford again for the Javelinas. Cornelius Shackleford, believe it or not, was a linebacker last year. You get a good shot of him right there in the uh, long dreadlocks, so uh, working down his back. We are just underway, as you see, and they'll check on the other side for the play, David Callaway is in his first season as the head coach of the Javelinas. Callaway, still the team's defensive coordinator. Gain of about three, it is second and eight. They'll do it for Shackelford again, breaking a couple of tackles across to the about the 41 yard line. Shackelford is a good one, 283 yards on the season coming in. That is 56 and a half yards a game. His longest run of the season has been a 37-yard carry. That was for six, it is third and one. You look at the Greyhound defense. Already we've called Tanner Melson's number. He made the initial stop. Third and very short, and it looks like they're going for it with the power set. They were wanting exactly what they got. The Javelinas had set up and were wanting what the Exactly what they got was for the Greyhounds to jump off sides. So they get the first down via the penalty route. You know, you heard me, you heard the tone of my voice as I sort of set up that play there. I sort of was laughing a crazy set that almost looked like the victory formation when you're running out the clock at the end of the ball game. I didn't think they were gonna run a play out of that formation. They didn't, they were just trying to get the Greyhounds to jump off sides and indeed that's what happened very quickly. They find themselves in great field position, not yet in Greyhound territory. It's a first and 10, Javelinas still in their own territory at the 46. Bedford, 34 of 72 on the season, averaging passing about 119 a game. Second completion of the afternoon to C.J. Griggs, and that was simply a check out on the left flat, and a gain of maybe two. The Havelina Brain Trust across the way. And Bedford will get his instructions. Shackleford not in there. They've gone to the spread. Two wide receivers right, one left. That's Griggs, who's already caught a couple of balls. In the backfield is Petrie. Petrie, a 5'7", 172-pounder. Little scat back out of Hutto, Texas. And the second down snap. Option. That's Petrie. Petrie averages 41 yards a game. He did have an 89 yard touchdown scamper against McMurray. You read that end, you see there, very good pitch by Bedford. Bedford is one of four quarterbacks who have already seen action for the Javelinas. Greyhounds have gone with their main signal caller, Jeremy Burma all season long, Bedford third and seven and he'll try to get it himself and it doesn't look like he's going to. They'll have to get rid of it. The wind is a crossing wind too long for a field goal as far as I'm concerned. We'll have to see what uh, coach David Calloway decides. That is a great shot right there and boy is it a massive blowing wind. I don't, I don't think they'd even think of a field goal. This is Angel Milan, the punter, Angel Millan, and you know, actually he'd been struggling a little bit and they had replaced him, but Millan will try to put it up in the air and drop it. 
deep in Greyhound territory. And uh, not a bad job. This could go inside the 20. That's a dangerous situation there. The ball bouncing and there were Greyhound players all around it. If that had touched any Greyhound performer, of course, that's a, a live football. As the Greyhounds come on offense first, you'll see Jeremy Firma. You see his passing numbers there, six touchdowns and a good ratio. It really is quite a ratio. He has uh, six touchdowns and only two interceptions. Number five in the Lone Star Conference, Jordan Wells, 457 yards on the ground, and Jacob Johnson, a good wide receiver. They do run more of the option set, though. And they have put the ball on the ground an awful lot this year and did it again. Marcus Engelman fumbles it out of bounds. You'll see this pitch. Engelman now, to, I say Engelman, I'm sorry. That is a Jordan Wells. Jordan Wells, 132 yards rushing last week. Had a 146 yard rushing game against Sol Ross earlier this year with a 64 yard scamper. Last week, the Greyhounds rambled for 368 yards rushing. Kingsville well aware of that though. And they do a good job on putting the stop on Christian Long. Christian Long, number six. The quarter, the uh, head coach, of course, is Josh Lynn for Eastern New Mexico. He was a tight end for this program years ago, and he's brought them back to the triple option offense. Burma under center on third and short. Will they get the first down? Very close. Very close. They needed to get to the just shy of the 25, and that's where they are. It may result in a measurement. Let's see. Did they give it? They gave it to them. The tip of the football on the 25, so the initial first down. Jeremy Burma is a 6'2", 180-pound redshirt sophomore out of Las Cruces, New Mexico. He stayed home to play football. Audibilizing, still in the triple option set. You see Yearwood behind him. That also is Elon Spite. They got a bunch of running backs. Burma, the option pitch. That is an absolutely outstanding tackle by Kalishi Amushu. I've worked on that name. You get a good shot of him right there. Let's look, let's look at him again. Kalichi comes off. I'm gonna say Kalichi, that's easy to say. <laughs> he comes off the end from the defensive backfield on the left side, knifing in, fighting off a block and making the tackle on Robert Armstrong. Direct handoff here, and you see Eastern Mexico with this crosswind. They almost exclusively are going to be running the football. Last week, as we told you, and a good win on the road. They've won their last two ball games on the road. The Greyhounds in the dark green look now at a third and eight. They rushed last week for 368 yards in winning at Northeastern Oklahoma. Jeremy Burma audibilizing. Number seven, Spite going to the left side. Still a full house backfield with one of the backfield performers in the slot right. First pass, Burma. Do they get the first down? They do. Burma on the year, 59 out of 114 with two interceptions. Has thrown for six touchdowns, 164 yards a game. And that is enough on third and eight to get the first down. They would love to keep the ball on the ground. They run motion again. Burma looking for the option pitch. Again, great penetration by the Javelinas. That'll be a loss and they'll look at second and at least 11 or 12. We do reiterate that for Texas A&M Kingsville, David Calloway is the head coach. He's still their defensive coordinator. Great penetration in the backfield and for the Javelinas, Mark Sevier was one of the guys over there making the tackle, forcing him out of bounds. So it's a loss of one, second and 11. Spike keeps moving back and forth. Mark. 
Fight in motion, he has the football. Little quick scat back across the 45. Uh, officially, they're gonna spot it right at the 45. Again for the Javelinas, Amushu on that left defensive set, making the stop. It'll set up a third and three. Third and three for the Greyhounds. Their first offensive drive, fullback dive play, will not get the first down, and they'll have to punt against that crossing wind. For the Greyhounds, Anthony Torres is their punter. Torres has put foot to football 30 times this year, averages 37.6. If he gets anywhere near 40 yards on this punt, it's an upset. The wind is more of a crossing wind, but it's, uh, well, actually, this may help him very slightly, but it's, uh, the wind's gonna be a factor in the kicking game today. Torres gets it off. Fair catch called for and taken by Clyde Lee. Check it, that is uh, Robert Armstrong. I'm sorry, Robert Armstrong with the catch. Very, very quick moving first quarter. We've already advanced to the 553 uh, mark, 544 as you can see on your screen. And that is due to the fact that both teams have kept the ball on the ground quite a bit. The wind, as we told you on our open, very much a factor today. And for the Javelinas, Caleb Bedford. You see number seven on the left there, Robert Armstrong. Both coaches will talk about it as we take our initial time out. Very early in the contest, we're scoreless as you watch Lone Star Conference football on foxsportssouthwest.com. Back to action in Eastern New Mexico. Blackwater draw between Clovis and Portales. The Greyhounds and Abilinas have each had one offensive series. Neither team has even threatened. Wind a major factor in both teams trying to keep the ball on the ground. Audibilizing number eight in your picture. The quarterback for the Abilinas is Caleb Bedford. That is Cornelius Shackelford. One of the top rushers in the league, Shackelford, bounced off. One hit, very good shot of very, very tall, lanky number 96, Joshua Bounds, out of Dripping Springs, Texas for the Greyhounds, making the stop there. David Calloway, the head coach for the Javelinas. Bedford again on the shotgun snap. He's two of two passing. That ball is tipped and incomplete. To that point in the ball game, Bedford was two of two passing for 12 yards. You'll see the defensive stop right there. Bedford now two of three. Does have time though, they protected him well. And you did see that ball tipped at the line of scrimmage. for the Javelinas. They face a third and eight. I've made the point how both teams have uh, tried to keep the ball on the ground. For the Javelinas, Shackelford has carried now three times for 11 yards. Bedford has scrambled once for a couple of yards. Petrie has two carries. Griggs has caught the only two receptions for the Javelinas. And Callaway and charges. Wanna talk about it. Javelinas now deep in their territory, figuring on third and eight. They better make sure they get this one right. Again, back to some early statistics. 
Eastern New Mexico in their initial offensive series. Had 32 yards of total offense, 21 rushing, 11 passing. Kingsville on the contest now, just 27 yards of total offense as they come back to the field facing the third and eight. That is what resulted in the timeout as David Calloway wanting to make sure they don't, they don't make a mistake deep in their territory. Wide open pro set backfield. Outstanding defensive play for the Greyhounds by Kevin Reeves. And did they throw a flag? They did. Boy, we'll have to look at that. I thought Reeves, I thought Reeves made a heck of a play and they've called pass interference and you'll get the first down. Bedford with the pass on a straight crossing route. Looked like pretty good defense to me. And for the Javelinas, Robert Armstrong was the intended receiver and that's the first down. So they called the timeout to set up a play, but I guarantee you Callaway wasn't banking on a pass interference call. And for the Greyhounds, Kevin Reeves, one of their top defensive backs out of Albuquerque, 34 tackles on the year coming in. So the Javelinas get a first down at their own 30. Bedford still a lot of time. I've noticed that all game long. He's really done a great job in the pocket. Simply had to throw it away. Did have an intended receiver. Andrew shows over there, but watch the time. He moves well. Sets up well in the pocket, but I'll tell you, Havelinas have done a great job in affording him some protection. Second and 10, scoreless. More than two thirds through your first quarter. Flat pass left side. That's Anthony Washington. Anthony Washington in your picture there, number 19. He scored the first touchdown of the year this year for Kingsville. It was a 60-yard run versus Central Washington in a game that did not count in the standings in Jerry Jones's Palace in Arlington. That gentleman right there, number 19, had a 100-yard kickoff return against uh, Monterey Tech when we had our Lone Star Conference football festival up there. That was good enough for seven, it is third and three. Bedford does not get the first down after an outstanding defensive play. You see him there, Seth Bailey. Bailey, their leading tackler. Bailey with 49 tackles coming in. Watch Bailey now, Bedford looking left. Bailey cutting across, nice play. Bailey had 10 tackles and an interception in their game against Tarleton. He had seven solo tackles last week and a big interception against Northeastern that really turned the game around for Eastern New Mexico. It'll force the second punt of the proceedings for Kingsville. And for the Greyhounds, that's Kevin Reeves. Reeves will do the honors on the return. He gets four. And the Greyhounds will have their second offensive opportunity. Full timeout, we'll take another little bit of a pause here. We're scoreless early on, late first quarter. Greyhounds and the Javelinas from Eastern New Mexico. We come back live and you see the wide open plains and the uh, flags uh, out full 
in those wide open plains today. 9.30 this morning for the ladies and 10.30 this morning for the men. We have the uh, Lone Star Conference cross, uh, cross country championships. Yeah, that's where they ran, out there in the wide open plains. We'll have a little tape highlight segment, an interview with uh, Conference Commissioner Stan Wagner about that at halftime. Greyhounds, second offensive series. First and 10 at their own 32, Burma. Fake and the flat pass. And another fumble for the Greyhounds. That's Jordan Wells and he fumbled on the other side of the field earlier today. They've had a horrible time this year. Have the Greyhounds in holding on to the football. The flat pass here to Jordan Wells. And Wells, this is two times he's fumbled now. Got to tuck that thing in. Boy, they knocked it away immediately. And a numerical counterpart picked it up. He's number 28. And for the Javelinas, number 28 is uh, Kalishi Amushu. And, and I've called his name three different times all last night as I did my homework. You see number 28 right there? I was I was practicing pronouncing his name, Kalishi Amushu. Kalishi Amushu. He's already made one great tackle, a stop, and then recovered a fumble there. And it sets up the first real definite scoring opportunity for the Javelinas, and they've already made Shackelford getting about three on the right side. I've already said they've uh, already made or already taken advantage of uh, a turnover situation. And both of these teams <coughs> are negative in our Lone Star Conference statistics as far as the takeaway giveaway turnover ratio. Eastern New Mexico is a negative one. They have taken the ball away on turnover 17 times, but now they've given it up eight to 19 times. Bedford wants it all on this one, and it'll be out of bounds. For the Javelinas, he was trying to find Griggs again. Griggs has caught two balls for 12 yards. You see Griggs in your picture right there. Washington has caught one ball for seven. Bedford is three of seven passing for just 19 yards, and you saw the effect of the wind right there. Bedford popped that thing in the air, and the wind is coming directly toward us. It is coming across the field toward our broadcast position. Bedford looking at a third and eight. The Greyhounds faked a blitz. Back to that turnover margin. Eastern New Mexico, number five in the league, negative one. They've gotten 17, but they've given it up 18 times. Third and eight, Bedford flushed out of the pocket, fires, caught, first down. Outstanding catch for the Javelinas by Robert Armstrong. Last week, Armstrong caught seven balls for 98 yards, and that right there was his 200th career catch. He is number four in the Lone Star Conference in receptions. That was his 200th career catch, Shackelford, jitterbugging. Shackelford spins for seven. I'm gonna give him eight, it'll be second and two, and all of a sudden the Javelinas look as if they could take early control of the contest. Bedford, a second and two. They have advanced to the 22. Shackelford again does not get the first down. I told you about the Eastern New Mexico turnover margin. Kingsville is dead last. They were a negative six. They had given it up 16 times this year and only gotten 10 turnovers. Had only gotten 10. But now they've pushed that total up to 11. They don't get the first down, third and three. Bedford trying to throw for it. Incomplete, it'll be fourth down and that should set up a field goal. So Bedford is now four of nine passing. And for the Javelinas, this will be Alex Rios. 
and it's really more of a crosswind. The public address announcer just said he's kicking into the wind. It's more of a crosswind. He's going to have to start this right. And got it. And I'm sorry, I said Rios. That's uh, Matt Stoll. Stoll now is a four of six on the year. He's also the punter. Punted 11 times this year, averaging about 38 yards a punt. So Stoll breaks the scoreless deadlock. Matt Stoll, the uh, 5'11 senior out of College Station, Texas. Bangs one through. The line of scrimmage was the 22-yard line. So give him a 30-yarder. And Kingsville has the early 3-0 advantage. Chris Needham back with you live in Eastern New Mexico. Neither of these teams have a lot of statistics where they lead the Lone Star Conference, but the Greyhounds do lead the Lone Star Conference in giving up the football, unfortunately. Kickoff return by Cameron Michael. Junior out of Sacramento, California. We'll have to look at that again. Michael, little scat back. 5'8", 175 pounder. As he was returning it, I was giving you that number. Watch Michael now, coming from the left of your screen, makes one cut right and then off he goes to that left sideline. Good blocking on the edge. Finally knocked out of bounds by Gilbert. So back come the Greyhounds. And Jeremy Burma. But Jarek Tucker carrying the mail there for the Greyhounds. Christian Long stays in there, as does uh, Tucker. And on this edge, Cameron Michael. Well, I tell you, both coaches have switched an awful lot of performers, and the Greyhounds just keep firing running backs in and out of there. For the Javelinos, that's Anthony Forker, one of their top defensive backs. Forker has made 38 stops this year. The junior out of Houston, Texas, tried to get off the field and uh, he's, he's, lost, he's lost a little pressure in one of the tires there. That group is right under the scoreboard at the east end of the field. This field is sort of at an angle, but it runs east-west. Back we go to activity in the final couple of minutes, a minute 50 remaining in your first quarter. For the Greyhounds, Jeremy Burma will go under center, again with that split backfield, but it is a triple option type backfield. Looks like the split T. Burma reads the end, and the pitch goes to Michael. Well, Michael is in there at running back. But Jordan Wells has carried the mail a bunch this year. He had 132 yards rushing last week. Christian Long had 102 yards rushing last week. They just keep running running backs in and out of there. The advance has gone to where it's a third and four from about the 42. In motion with Spite. Elon Spida, junior out of St. Louis. We're in the final minute. Clock continues to roll. Fullback handoff. That was Christian Long. Flags are everywhere. The Javelinas have an injured player. That's uh, Michael Utu across the way. Big number 73 is being helped off the field, and I mean, that's a load right there. 
410 pounder. You see him. For the Greyhounds, that's the handoff to Christian Long. Long came into the contest, and this is a major penalty. Chop block cutting below the waist against the Greyhounds. He did not get the first down anyway, but they'd rather have the distance, and now they'll look at about third and 19. Yeah, that Havelina defensive performer that left the field, they list him at 410 pounds. So a major, major third and 18 for Burma. Flat pass left side, bubble screen actually, and did they lose the ball again? There was a scramble for the football at the end of that play, but I think he was down, fourth down. Again, they'll have to punt it away. For the Greyhounds, this is Anthony Torres. Torres had about a 32-yard punt last time. Havelinos lead the contest 3-0 as we go to the final play of the first quarter. This is a great punt. And a fair catch called for by Robert Armstrong. That will end your first quarter. Both teams kept it on the ground a lot. Jeremy Burma, three of three passing. Bedford, four of nine passing. As we come back to the second quarter, Kingsville will have the ball and a three-nothing lead. Texas A&M University, Kingsville, the Havelinas of head coach David Calloway, six years as the defensive coordinator. He's the first, uh, this is his first year as the head coach. First effort of uh, quarter number two. Running play for the Havelinas. Bedford does stay in there at quarterback. <laughs> Bedford looking left. And the pass complete to uh, Patrick LaFleur. Patrick LaFleur out of the backfield, number 80 as you see. They'll call it a five yard gain. We'll say second and five for the Greyhounds. Wide open tackle for Benjamin Pedro Langford. Langford, 13 tackles, two and a half for loss in the game against Angelo State. One of their top performers. Misdirection handoff on the second down play, a loss of three. As the Javelinas give it to Greg Petrie. Petrie's a two freshman out of uh, Hutto, Texas. Havelinas have done a good job defensively against the Greyhounds and got the football back, but bad field position deep in their own territory. And it is sort of a quartering win that they're going into. Bedford is now five of 10 passing for 35 yards. He'll pass again on third and seven. Off the fingertips of Robert Armstrong. Armstrong should have caught that. Armstrong had snuck in between the lower and upper zone. 
And that's a good pass by Bedford. That, one sh that one's got to be cut. On the backside defending for the Greyhounds was uh, Abraham Maiga, sophomore out of Socorro, New Mexico. And for the Javelinos, uh, Angel Millan. Millan will punt it away. Wind blowing right in my face, bad snap. Millan's gonna have to hurry to get rid of this thing. That is gonna be a turnover at the 29 yard line is the line of scrimmage. So the Greyhounds are gonna get outstanding field position. The Greyhounds are gonna get outstanding field position. I am thinking, I believe I'm seeing Josh Lynn down there. Is that Coach Lynn going crazy? He was arguing about something, but he just got a great turnover, yeah. So here come the Greyhounds with obviously a wonderful scoring opportunity now for the Greyhounds, uh, Jeremy Burma, the 6'2", red shirt sophomore out of Las Cruces, has an opportunity, first and 10, just 29 yards away from a go-ahead touchdown. Burma, three of three passing so far. Again, they're running that option package more than anything. Well, that's a five on five situation right there for the Greyhounds. Cameron Michael, number five, carrying the mail and watch number five defensively, Anthony Forker come up and stop him. Here's the pitch to Michael in motion from the right side. He's number five and his numerical counterpart sheds a blocker and makes a great play. That's Anthony Forker, the junior out of Houston. My goodness, great play, gain of just one. Fullback dive for maybe three. For the Greyhounds, was that Long? Yeah, Christian Long, the big fullback. Evan Tooley will check in, they'll rotate tight ends. Actually, they go tight ends set and replacing Adrian Horton, the wide receiver, so they go to Power of the offense to the right side on third and seven for Burma. He's perfect passing, but here's the pitch. They'll try to run for the first down and just come up shy. That's spite. That's spite. It looked to me as if he came up about a half a yard short. As you watch the replay, he's got to get to the 20 and, well, he did make it. I apologize, he did not make it. They pushed it back and very quickly they tried to dive for the first down and right there it looks as if it's short as well and that was on fourth down. Are they gonna turn it over on downs? They may have to measure here. Well, it appeared like he just had to get to the 20 but the tip of the football, actually the chain was at about the 19 and a half. And uh, I'm guessing, but I'm, I'm thinking he's gonna be about four inches shy. You, you watch this measurement here. I think, I think he's gonna be about four inches short of this thing. Boy, I hit that right on the head, didn't I? He is just shy. So back to back offensive sets for these two football teams where they give up the football on downs and Josh Lynn is screaming that the Greyhounds got a bad spot right there. Well, I tell you, you heard me on my play-by-play -play and I apologize. I thought that he had, dove, had dived across the 20 and had gotten that first down very quickly. They lined up and tried to dive for it and they, uh, they didn't make it. So the Javelinas turn it over on downs and then the Greyhounds turn it over on downs. Boy, you can watch college football for three weeks, every game possible, and never see that. Back-to-back -back series where the teams turn it over on downs, four and out, first and 10. Javelinas, they lead three nothing. Bedford keeps it, gets four. For the Greyhounds, that's Seth Bailey. Bailey's their leading tackler out of Texaco, New Mexico, 6'2", 230-pounder, 49 stops on the year. 
Clock continues to roll, 11.35 left second quarter, low scoring contest, three nothing. Kingsville got a field goal, late first quarter. Bedford now has carried two times for five yards rushing. They gave him four on that, we'll call it second and six. Bedford couldn't get the signal. He wants to pause. We'll pause just a little bit with him. Kingsville leads it 3 0. 11 23 left. First half. And nobody knocking any home runs yet for either ball club. Total offense, and we are, uh, we're 20 minutes into this football game. Total offense, Kingsville just 73 yards. Eastern New Mexico just 62. Burma three of three passing for just 26. Bedford five of 11 passing for 35 yards. Shackelford is back in the backfield. He's gained 20 so far, gets a fake. Bedford keeps and gets two. It'll be third and three. I want a shot. Whenever you can, Matt, I want a shot of, of uh, Daryl and McLeod, number two, closest to us right here, the defensive back. Look at this guy, number two, the green uniform. He's got pink tights and yellow shoes on there. I love it. I love it. Is he making a fashion statement? <laughs> Let's see what defensive statement he makes. Big third down play. They get the first down. That's a great pass. Bedford to Clyde Lee. Clyde Lee makes that catch. It was third and five, sort of against a powerful crosswind. And uh, Bedford is able to throw for the first down. So he is now six of 12 passing. First and 10, Havelinas of Kingsville. They've won five straight in this series from the 31. Give it Shackelford. He's a powerful, powerful runner, gets two. It'll be second and eight, but all of Shackelford's numbers, you'll see the power right here, but he doesn't get a bunch of yardage with the long ones, all right? He, he's totaled. 283 yards this year, 57 yards a game. His longest carry this year has been 37 yards. Gain of two, it'll be second and eight. Kingsville right side hash mark. Bedford has Shackelford to his left. Shackelford gets it again. You know, you gotta, you gotta give me credit for that right there. Give me credit for that right there because I said Shackelford very rarely breaks a long one. His longest had been 37. This one may be coming back. This one might be coming back because of an illegal block, but he kept in bounds and got all the way down. 
to about the 47. That would have approached one of his longest runs of the year, but that is a hold. We're gonna look at the official right now and get the call. Yeah, they'd already made that. It was, uh, it was a hold, so it'll still be second down. Looked as if it was really an illegal cutback block right there on the right sideline. So Shackelford does not get credit for that yardage. Second and 15, Bedford a shotgun snap line of scrimmage now is their own 27. My goodness, did he thread the needle that time? Did he thread the needle to Elon Spite? I'm sorry, to uh, Robert Armstrong. Look at the three defend. This ball goes between three defenders. One, two, three. Look at that. That's Robert Armstrong. Armstrong now has caught two balls, and Bedford's numbers are starting to look pretty impressive. He's 7 of 13 for 54 yards passing. Armstrong has caught 201 career passes now. First down ramble for the Javelinas. This is Greg Petrie. Petrie started right, cut back left. And they're gonna hurry to the line of scrimmage. Bedford audibilizing, trying to catch the Greyhounds. They're not set defensively if they'd snapped it. Boy, that, that happens a lot of times in these new college spread offenses. They get up there. Oh, I gotta have something else you gotta look for. I'm gonna get a camera shot, Matt, in a minute and let you know something here. That ball was tipped and it rolls right back into. That was a tip ball and Shane Prater caught it. Watch this ball be tipped and then Prater goes, look what I found. That's, that's what I was gonna ask you to look for right there. Look at that. You know, when I looked at it a minute ago, I said, is that RG3? It looked like Robert Griffin. How did you know that's what I wanted to, how'd you know that's what I wanted to look for? My producer, Matt Broussard, I was gonna say, look at that sign over there, and that, that looked like RG3. <laughs> As I look at it now, but uh, I don't know who that is. <laughs> Gain of about two, it'll be second and eight as this is a very, very impressive drive for the Javelinas as they started deep in their own territory. Washington there got the run. It was a two yard run. So it is second and eight. Bedford again, really dinking and diving, doing a good job with these seven, eight, nine yard passes. That's Robert Armstrong again. Armstrong coming into the ball game had caught 36 passes for three touchdowns. Last week he caught seven balls. They did lose the ball game. Last week against uh, North Alabama, one of our top Division II programs, Armstrong caught seven balls last week for 98 yards, has 28 touchdown catches in his career. This is a very big third and three for both teams. Pump fake. Does Bedford get away from the sack before he dives for the first down? Well, I've got a bad angle. I'm not sure whether he spotted it. It looks, yeah, he just got it. Our broadcast position is down at the other end of the field. It was a little hard to see. Boy, he just avoided a sack right there from uh, Bracey McCoy. And Bedford has kept this drive alive with a nice scramble. This has been the most impressive drive of the uh, afternoon so far for the Javelinas. Anthony Washington. On a wing back reverse, Washington had a 60 yard run. I say wing back reverse, actually they had it him spotted in the backfield. He comes back in now, there, there you see him, that's Anthony Washington. He scored the first touchdown of the year this year for Kingsville on a 60 yard run in their opening contest against Central Washington. They're gonna give him seven on that, second and three. It'll be third down. After that handoff to Washington. So 
Boy, he hardly got anything. I'm still going to call it third and three. Can the Greyhounds uh, shut this drive down? Been a very, very impressive drive. In the backfield, Greg Petrie. Petrie, number 33, to the right now, to the left of Bedford. The big tight end is Andrew Shows. They're looking for the first down and do not get it. Leo Gonzalez, there you see Leo Gonzalez, the tight end on the left side. Now Bedford's been very, very good in these short routes. Tight end, Gonzalez goes out to the left side and that was thrown a little bit too far to his right. This would be from the 33. This would be a 43 yard field goal. Crosswind again, as we told you. That's gonna be wide right, and that's the way the wind is blowing. For the Javelinas, that was uh, Mian. So the Greyhounds dodge a bullet. That was the most impressive drive uh, so far of the afternoon. Kingsville now with total offense of 131 yards. Eastern New Mexico in the contest only 62 yards of total offense. And remember last week they had 485 yards of total offense. We take a break from Eastern New Mexico. Back to activity we go in Blackwater, draw New Mexico. Greyhounds dodged a bullet. And Jeremy Burma back on. 440 remaining in the second quarter. The Greyhounds trail by three. Again, I will point out the most amazing statistic of the ball game right now. We hearken back to last week. Last week for Eastern New Mexico, they had 368 yards rushing. That's the most that they've had since they had 488 against East Central. And last week, Eastern New Mexico had 485 yards of total offense. So far through more than a quarter and a half, they have only 67 yards of total offense and not getting much more right now. Although breaking a tackle is that long? That's Christian Long. So Long did initially look as if he were gonna be stopped and kept on trucking. Christian Long now up to the second. That was his sixth carry. Now has 22 yards rushing. The Greyhounds may be saying, we just gotta keep this ball on the ground and power it forward as we did last week at Northeastern. Burma audibilizing again from the triple option set. Their head coach, Josh Lynn, was a tight end with this program. The pitch and tiptoeing up the sideline was Cameron Michael. Michael shaking his head, thinking I tried to tiptoe. Got the first down across midfield. Watch where he goes out. This is Michael coming in motion. Burma does a good job again of reading the option. Michael goes tip, 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 up. He just stepped out of bounds. Take it to the 48 yard line. They're gonna say the 47 really. Long gets the fake. Burma tries to roll around the right side and I just, I just get the feeling. 
Burma has thrown only three balls today. I just get the feeling they're just going to try to pound it. Kingsville has done a good job of holding the Greyhounds down. I, I reiterate, last week, 485 yards of total offense. Now they're up to 90 as we near the end of the first half. No gain at all there. Second and 10 for Burma. His fourth pass of the day. He's going for everything. That was his fourth pass of the afternoon for the Javelinas. Defensive effort again, Kalishi Amushu. This surprised me, and I'm sure that's what they thought. They were going to surprise the Javelinas. They'd been run, 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 and then all of a sudden try to throw it down the middle. Incomplete, and I have called Kalishi Amushu's name about five times already in that Javelina defensive backfield. He's doing a wonderful job. Now, the good news is if they made that, it shocks everybody. The bad news is it sets up a third and 10, and they've got to do it again. They'll have to pass now on third and 10. Crossing pass for the first down. For the Greyhounds, that's complete to Jacob Johnson. He's caught 21 balls now this year. The junior out of Idaloo, Texas, 5'10", 185 pounder. This is a beautiful route. You see him at the bottom of the screen. Cuts across, that's a great pass for Burma too. Jeremy Burma, wonderful job. Most impressive drive of the afternoon for the Greyhounds. First and 10 at the Javelina 29, Burma. Option set. Off of it, he'll throw again. No, he will not. Not if I have anything to say about it, says Zane Brown. Big number 99, Zane Brown. Six foot, 300 pounder out of Houston. Timeout called for the Javelinas. We get down under two minutes. You saw Coach Galloway across the way, defensive uh, oriented for the Javelinas. Former tight end head coach Josh Lynn for the Greyhounds. As we uh, have this break, I'll simply go through some individual numbers for you. For uh, the Greyhounds, Eastern New Mexico, Burma, four of five passing, 43 yards. Christian Long has carried six times for 21 yards. Cameron Michael, three times for 16 and Elon Spite has carried four times for 14. For Kingsville, Bedford, nine of 16 passing for 69 yards. Shackelford is rushed for 22 yards. Petrie for 20. Armstrong has caught three balls for 28 yards and for Armstrong, that pushes his total as a collegian to 202 catches. Second and a bundle right here for the Javelinas. The play that worked on the first down completion a minute ago works again, Jacob Johnson. Well, if you go to the well and you get some nice clear crystal water, then you go to the well again. You see him at the bottom of your screen there on the left. That's Jacob Johnson. He caught that big pass for the first down a minute ago. That one got nine, but just gets them back to the original line of scrimmage. Burma trying to throw for the first down, will not get it. Guess who that defensive back is. That same guy I've been bragging about. For the Greyhounds, Aaron Johnson makes the catch, but that tackle by Kalishi Amushu. So it is fourth and three. Boy, what a monstrous play this is. What do you do? Do you want to tie the game? Right before halftime for the Greyhounds. Uh, Mitchell Cox, his longest field goal was 48. Mitchell Cox is two of four on the season, a freshman out of Kent, Washington. But the way I'm looking at the huddle and uh, sort of analyzing the wind and everything else, I'm not sure they're gonna kick a field goal. It's fourth and a long two, I'd call it fourth and three. Do you try to power long up the middle inside? Well. I just saw Mitchell Cox warming up. He's got yellow shoes too. <laughs> Look at Cox number 31 down there on the left. To the left of their big huddle is Cox warming up there. And, uh, but they didn't send him in. 
They're bringing the offense back on. They're going for it. They're going for it. They're trying to get the crowd excited here. Fourth and three to keep a drive alive. They're down three, nothing. Power pitch left side. He got the first down. He got the first down. Bumping off of two or three tacklers. This is Tucker. Boy, they've had everybody. I got to see whether they want me to run. They've had about seven running backs carry the ball so far today. Another fumble. Another fumble for the Greyhounds. That's Cameron Michael. He does recover. But unfortunately, Jordan Wells has fumbled twice. Now Michael fumbles. They didn't lose that one. But fumbles, because they got no momentum out of that thing, they're forced all the way back to the 27-yard line. And that's another timeout called by Josh Lynn, second-year head coach of the Greyhounds. Now that was the third fumble of the game for Eastern New Mexico. They've lost one. The, lo the one they lost set up the field goal for Kingsville. And that one sort of slowed down the momentum. They're fighting three different things right now. The Greyhounds are fighting three different things. First of all, that group right there, big number seven for the Javelinas. They're fighting that defense, they're fighting the wind, and they're fighting the clock. Only one minute left. Second and long, Burma rolling right. He'll get yardage, but far from enough, and there's a Mushu again for the Greyhounds. That catch by Jacob Johnson. Kalishi Amushi, number 28 for the Javelinas. He has been everywhere defensively. That gain was maybe four. It'll be third and 16. We go to the final 50 seconds. As we said, they're fighting the Javelinas, they're fighting the wind, and they're fighting the clock. Burma, shotgun snap. He is now seven of eight passing, right flat, not even close to getting enough yardage, and now they will try the field goal to tie the game right before halftime. So the Javelinas are going, or the Greyhounds are going to try to get a Mitchell Cox field goal. Maybe we can go into the locker room. All knotted up at three. The wind is blowing from his right to left very strongly. This would be a 36-yarder uh, long enough. Wynn took it. Wynn took it. The wind took it wide left. It went wide left. The wind is coming this way. As we said, from our broadcast position, all the angles at which you are watching the football game, it's blowing right toward you. And... Uh, he had the distance, but that thing went from right to left, went wide left. It appears as if we'll have a 3-3 three, three time, a 3-3 three, three tie as we go to the locker room. Javelinas, I doubt, will try anything fancy here, deep in their own territory. Simply a straight handoff to uh, Greg Petrie. Petrie had an 89-yard touchdown run against McMurray earlier this year. Averages uh, 41 yards a ball game. Got eight. It'll be second and two. One more play. The Greyhound defensive backfield back about 40 yards past the line of scrimmage, like worrying about a Hail Mary, but there's no way you'd try something like that against the wind here. So that'll be your first half. Very, very low scoring Kingsville ends up with 139 yards of total offense. Eastern New Mexico, 117 yards of total offense. Kingsville has a 3-0 lead. We take a little bit of a break. We'll come back in a little bit and talk some cross country with our Lone Star Conference championships here earlier today.
Chris Needham back with you live. We're back live at Blackwater Draw, New Mexico, just north of Portales, where Eastern New Mexico uh, has their campus. You saw our score at halftime. Three to nothing in the uh, football contest, but this is this morning. We did some filming for you because uh, Stan Wagnon to my uh, immediate left, the commissioner of the Lone Star Conference. Uh, you were here this morning in the blustery, blustery plains out here for the men and women cross country championship. Stan, take it away. They had a good crowd and boy, everybody from the LSC running over these windy plains here today. Yeah, it was uh, pretty neat to have the cross country meet out here. Uh, finished here actually at Greyhound Stadium. The, when they crossed the goal line, that was the finish line this morning. Uh, but uh, we did have seven women's teams and seven men's teams competing for the Lone Star Conference Championship. You're seeing some highlights of our women's race today. And the women uh, run 6,000 uh, meters. And West Texas A&M uh, uh, defended its Lone Star Conference Championship from a year ago. And now back-to-back -back LSC champions, the Lady Buffs, uh, had the third place, fifth place, seventh place, and ninth place finishers in the meet uh, to edge Tarleton State. WT a 35 point total, and uh, Tarleton State a 55 point total. Now Tarleton did have a good showing. They had three girls in the top 10, including our individual uh, number one and number two runners. Uh, winning the meet for Tarleton was Lindsey Hinton. She uh, had a time of 22 minutes and 14 seconds. And then coming in right behind her in second place was Allie Coughlin, also from Tarleton, 22 minutes and 22 seconds. Uh, top finisher for the Lady Buffs was Maria Gorner, uh, 22 minutes and 29 seconds. And uh, so WT one, Tarleton two, Midwestern States women were third this year with 77 points. And then the host Eastern New Mexico uh, was in fourth at 83 points. And Adam Commerce rounded out our top five uh, for the women, and so it was a great meet, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of exciting uh, action out there. And then they went off at 9:30 in the morning. Uh, as soon as that was done, at 10:30 we went off with our men's championship meet. Uh, men at this meet run 8,000 meters, and again West Texas A&M uh, claimed the title, and so we had a clean sweep for uh, WT today. On the men's side, uh, really dominating performance by the Buffs. They uh, scored 22 points. They went one, two, four, seven, and eight. Uh, and then their sixth and seventh place runners who didn't count towards the team score also made all conference because they finished 12th and 15th. So they brought seven runners and all seven earned all conference today. Uh, Eastern New Mexico, the host and two-time defending champion, uh, finished as runner up in uh, 2013. They had 67 points this morning. A&M Commerce was third with 88 points. And uh, Cameron fourth, Tarleton fifth, on the men's side. Individually, it was Dylan Doss from West Texas A&M winning the title, 25 minutes, 18 seconds. Uh, his teammate, Anthony Bamal, uh, was the runner up, 25 minutes and 30 seconds. And then Cameron's Thomas Toth was third. Uh, so again, strong day for West Texas A&M here uh, at Blackwater Draw, great championship. And kind of feels good to get the championship season underway. This was our first one for the 2013-14 academic year. And uh you have been everywhere. You were all this past week in Indianapolis, Indiana at the uh, at the uh, commissioner's meeting with all the commissioners and all NCAA. And then you and uh, Melanie Robotham of our staff in the Lone Star Conference got in here last night, had to do a lot. I met you in the lobby. You were working with uh, T-shirts and logistics out here this morning. Yeah. Logistically, a cross-country meet, that's that's tough to put on sometimes. These guys did a great job, didn't they? It really is hard, you know, and, and the reason is because if you're not in the business of hosting a cross-country meet each year and if you don't have a course set up that you maintain all year long, it's a lot of work when you talk about manicuring uh, 8,000 meters worth of terrain. And so, uh, you know, the, out here at Blackwater Draw, obviously this is a kind of a historic site. They've got the museum out here with the fossils and remains and all kinds of stuff out here. And obviously the football stadium uh, right here in the middle of it, uh, but uh, it's, it's a little bit of a sandy terrain out here too. And so I think that provided some challenges uh, both in getting the course ready, but also uh, for our runners. You know, cross country, you think, well, why are they worried about the terrain? But it really was uh, a real challenge for them because, you know, some of the spots would be hard packed and some of the spots were maybe a little bit more uh, mushy or whatever you want to say for loose sand. Uh, 
And so it, it was a, a real challenge. But I think in, at, the, at the end of the day, it was good competition. And what, what it will do is it will give our athletes uh, an advantage as they go into the regional because now they know they can run in any type of uh, condition and any type of uh, uh, terrain. And so I think I think uh, something happened to my – I think we're okay. Earphone, okay. Um, so I, I, in a, in other, any, anyway, what I'm saying is I think it gives them a mental edge knowing that they can come into a course that's maybe different than what they're used to, a different type of terrain maybe they've not run on, and uh, for them to be able to, to conquer that and, and compete well, I think it will give them a, a good uh, feeling going into regionals. And regionals, by the way, are two weeks from now here in this same part of the country, but over in Canyon, Texas, uh, West Texas A&M will host the NCAA South Central Regionals, and uh, so they'll get ready for that. But getting back to what you're talking about, I mean, it is uh, pretty cumbersome to put on a, a cross-country meet. The entire softball team was out here uh, stationed across different parts of the course, making sure that everyone stayed on the course and, and no one was impeding the progress of another runner, things of that nature. Uh, we had two or three timing officials that were here to make sure the timing was right. Uh, I think there was about six or eight uh, meet officials that were involved with the scoring and the, uh, you know, obviously the starter. And so it, it really is a pretty big project to put on a cross country meet. We had seven men's teams, seven women's teams, uh, about 120 runners total for wow. the day. Yeah. So that, uh, as you said, it is a, a, a logistic amount of work and so forth. Now. Uh, final point before we let you go. We're at halftime of our football game, by the way. Uh, the Javelinas of Texas A&M Kingsville, three to nothing over the Greyhounds of Eastern New Mexico. As you began that segment and you talked about it, you said, well, here we are excited now to be in our uh, championship season. Go through that a little bit, and I'll be involved in the broadcasts uh, to a certain extent on uh, We've got volleyball coming up, soccer coming up. Elaborate a little bit on those. Yeah, we've got uh, in, in soccer and volleyball, these next two, uh, the format this year is that the number one seed is going to get the, the right to host those events. And so uh, we really don't know for sure where they're going to be. We have an idea uh, on soccer, which is our next event coming up uh, November 8th and 10th. Uh, there will be two semifinal matches on Friday the 8th, and then our championship match will be on Sunday the 10th. We have an idea that it's probably either going to be at uh, Angelo State in San Angelo, Texas, or Midwestern State in Wichita Falls, Texas. Uh, those teams play identical schedules the rest of the way out. Um, and so I think, you know, we'll see how it goes tomorrow. And then they play each other, um, I guess, a week from Friday. And so um, obviously the outcome of those will, will probably dictate who gets to host the conference tournament. We'll be going to one of those places and look forward to a real balanced competition. Our women's soccer teams are all – uh, real competitive with each other, a lot of balance, and, and probably uh, any one of those teams could walk away with the trophy this year. And then uh, we'll take another week off. And then November 21, 22, and 23 is our volleyball championships. Again, the number one seed will host. And right now, all things are pointing toward Canyon, Texas. The Lady Buffs are having another uh, solid year. We've got a really good uh, crop of volleyball teams this year. You know, Angelo State's uh, really come on and, and uh, asserted themselves nationally. I think they were ranked as high as number seven in the country this year. Uh, Tarleton State, Texas Women's, Texas A&M Commerce are all programs that uh, are enjoying winning seasons. Um, you know, I, I looked at the box scores last night. Texas A&M Kingsville, a, a team that, that has been kind of on hard times with their volleyball program, uh, last night they played West Texas to within two points, I think, wow. all three games. Now, they lost, but that shows the progress that they're making, the confidence they're gaining. And uh, so we really do have a, a very competitive volleyball conference. Looking forward to that championship event again, November 21 to the 23rd, probably going to be in Canyon, Texas, although anything can happen. Lots of things on the schedule. Stan, you're doing a great job, and uh, you're, you're running like a headless chicken a lot of times, but <laughs> thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right, thank you. Chris Needham live here in uh, Canyon. I'm sorry, hey, we're talking about Canyon. We're at uh, Blackwater Draw, Eastern New Mexico. You saw the score on the board. We'll watch a little bit more. I'll take just a little bit of a break here as we uh, get ready and rest our vocal cords a little bit for quarter number three. About eight minutes away, the uh, Javelinas and the Greyhounds, Texas A&M Kingsville on the road. They've got an early 3-0 lead or a very slim 3-0 lead as we get set for the second half.
Are we ready to rock and roll? We are. Hey, we come back to you live. Hi, everybody. Chris Needham. We're broadcasting live from Greyhound Stadium on the highway between Clovis and Portales, New Mexico. Blackwater draw. A shocker? Well, I, I don't know. Eastern New Mexico last week. The Greyhounds went to uh, Northeastern Oklahoma State University, Doc Watley Stadium up there. They won it 35 to 14. The week before, they had trailed the Greyhounds. Uh, Eastern New Mexico had trailed Angelo State 28 to nothing. They came back to win that game 29-28 on the road. <laughs> and then, as we said last week, went to Northeastern and won 35 to 14 and had 485 yards of total offense. Well, today they go through two quarters of football here at home. They are scoreless and have only 117 yards of total offense. Texas A&M Kingsville with the three to nothing lead. Texas A&M Kingsville, 148 yards of total offense. In this day and age of college football, where you see scores that are astronomical. Just off the top of my head, I just heard the PA announcer here saying that West Texas and uh, McMurray, is that right? Yeah, West Texas A&M is playing at McMurray. That game is in the 80s to the 50s. It's something like 83 to 57. <laughs> Mind boggling. Well, here at halftime, we've got a 3-0 ball game. The defenses have arisen, and the offensive just um, have not been able to do much. Here at halftime, here are your numbers. As I said, uh, Kingsville with 148 yards of total offense. The Greyhounds, 117. Um, Eastern New Mexico has been penalized three times for 34 yards. Kingsville is kicking off to the Greyhounds. That'll go out of the end zone. And Eastern New Mexico University. On the season, you can see some of their uh, statistics right here. Technically, both teams in the lower echelon of the Lone Star Conference as far as statistics. Kingsville is dead last in total offense and total defense as far as points scoring are concerned, but you see some of the numbers there. Back to activity now come the Greyhounds with Jeremy Burma, the quarterback. On the initial quarterback keeper will get two. It'll be second and eight. Bouncing off the bottom of the pile. Tried to check the number there for the Javelinas. Was that Robert Williams? It was. That's big Robert Williams who got the stop there for Texas A&M Kingsville. Burma, maybe, yeah, we'll call it two. It'll be second and eight. He is under center again. Long snap count, hard count, option pitch. And that is uh, Elon Spite. Spite for uh, Eastern New Mexico carried four times for just 14 yards. You see number seven right there. He carried just four times for 14 yards. I tell you, the Havelina defense and their head coach, as you're well aware, is David Calloway. For six years, he has been the defensive coordinator at Kingsville and has done a great job. Now he's the head coach and they're playing a good defensive game here today. Fourth fumble, fourth fumble of the afternoon for the Greyhounds, a very dejected, you got a good shot of his facial expression there, very dejected Jeremy Burma there. As they tried the option pitch and Burma, well, you know, nobody was looking for the football. Wow, for the Greyhounds, it looked like Elon Spite thought that they were gonna go to the back guy. He was the forward performer pass in the right flat complete. Is that gonna be enough for first down yardage? It is right where the marker is, but I think they got it. For the Greyhounds, Jordan Wells. 
And that is a first down. So Burma now is nine of 10 passing for 80 yards. We just got the statistics updated on the second. Burma, nine of 10 passing for 80 yards. This is a ball club that rushed last week for 368 yards. Burma on the season, 59 of 114, having one of his better passing days of the season. They would love to control the ball on the ground with that triple option set. But a lot of times from that triple option set, if you run, 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 and get the defense thinking run, then you do have the opportunity for a good percentage on the pass completions. That ramble was for five. That was Christian Long, Long for five yards, second and five. Spite in motion from left to right. When they don't run the play, then Spite has to reset with his yellow shoes, as you can see. Will he go in motion again? He does from left to right. Long, got five a minute ago, gets three right there. That's Christian Long. He averages 44 yards a game. He had 102 yards rushing last week and scored two touchdowns at Northeastern. So let's call it uh, third and two. Why do some of these guys have that yellow footwear? I like it. Good fashion statement. Yellow always goes good with green. First down, Ramble, 40 to the 36 for the Greyhounds. That's Jordan Wells. Wells has been guilty of two of their fumbles. Here's the pitch to Wells. We started out on the yellow shoes. That for Wells was an 11 yard ramble to the 35. And here again, now a flag has been thrown deep in the defensive backfield. Two flags have been thrown deep in the Havelina defensive backfield. We're three and a half minutes into the third quarter, still three nothing Kingsville, but the Greyhounds are attempting to try to get on the scoreboard for the first time today. This penalty is gonna be a major penalty from the original line of scrimmage. Nope, just a five yarder. So it is just a five yarder and uh, they're able to replay first down. So right before halftime, right before halftime for the Greyhounds, Mitchell Cox had a 32 yard field goal attempt to tie the game, missed it. This is their best opportunity since, obviously. This is Jordan Wells. Wells on the corner has the first down, gain of about six. That five yard penalty a minute ago was a uh, Kingsville offside penalty. Fake one way, look motion coming from right to left. Now he'll go back from left to right. Jordan Wells, you won't see that very often either. Almost a horse collar tackle. First and 10, Greyhounds at the Havelina 22. The amazing passing statistics continue for Burma. Burma gets the completion there. He is now 11, I'm sorry, 10 of 11. Burma is now 10 of 11 passing. That was for five, it'll be second and five. Jeremy Burma got it to Adrian Horton. So call it actually second and six, long right up the middle, does not have the first down. It'll be third and short, Havelina tackle by Henry Greathouse, 6'1", 231. But this drive, remember, started at the 20. This is the best effort offensively of the afternoon for the Greyhounds. So obviously you go into the locker room at halftime and make some adjustments and they've done a great job. This started at their own 20. They're already down to the 15, third and one and they get the first down. That's long again. Well, long now has carried 10 times uh, for almost 40 yards. They're banging it out. Remember last week, Christian Long had 102 yards rushing. 
and uh, Jordan Wells had 132. Here's the first down snap. Burma drops the football again, but the play had been whistled dead. We'll read the penalty. That's probably a false start or, yeah, it's offsides. It's offsides defensively against Kingsville. So the opportunity is here right now for the homestanding Greyhounds to take their initial lead of the contest. Remember, Kingsville has won the last five games that these two teams have played. Again for the Greyhounds, Elon Spite in motion left to right. He'll go back and line up on that left flank. Triple option set, Burma on uh, actually first and goal. The power pitch, touchdown, Greyhound. Rashawn Lawrence. Rashawn Lawrence gets the carry. We'll watch it again. Lawrence in motion will get the power pitch. Got a good block in the cutback. He got a pancake block on the corner there. Matt, I don't think we're gonna be able to see who it was, but run that replay one more time as, as Lawrence goes by to make the cut inside. Watch, he's got a pancake block on the corner here. I'm not sure who made, let's see, who'd be leading the play, was that long? Watch the block, this is, look, right down, <laughs> flattened. Flattened was uh, Kerry Wheatfall Jr., the defensive back for Kingsville. So remember, in this series over the years, Kingsville has defeated Eastern New Mexico 24 of 29 times that they've played, and the Javelinas have won the last five times. The last time Eastern New Mexico beat Kingsville was in 2006. They beat them 37 to 14. So the... Uh, Eastern New Mexico University Greyhounds trying to break that spell and also keep their winning streak alive. Another interesting streak statistic for you is that the Javelinas come in here at two up and four down and Kingsville defeated Central Washington to open the year. They defeated Monterey Tech in uh, Texas Stadium, Jerry Jones's AT&T Stadium on September 14th, that did not count in the season record, but after defeating Central Washington and Monterey Tech, they beat McMurray, but then they've lost four in a row to West Texas, Midwestern, Texas A&M Commerce, and to North Alabama. Javelinas come in here losing four in a row, and they have not lost five in a row in uh, almost 20 years, since 1993. That 93 Texas A&M Kingsville team started the season losing five in a row. Ironically, they then won seven of their next eight ball games and ended up in the national semifinals. But can uh, the Greyhounds break this long losing streak to the Javelinas? Well, the major question that will answer that is uh, what will the Javelinas do now? Can they respond? It's what happens early in the third quarter. The first five to 10 minutes of a third quarter are always the most important parts of a ball game because it shows what type of adjustments you made at halftime. Onside kick, my goodness. That was a gutsy, gutsy call by uh, Josh Lynn. We need to look at that. We need to look at that again, yeah. That's definitely an onside kick. Before the ball game here today, I was watching on ESPN. I watched the Vanderbilt-Texas A&M game in Division One, and Vanderbilt got down 28 to nothing, but then they got a field goal, and then they had an onside kick as well, recovered it, made it 28-10, and you thought they could get back in the ball game. What uh, Josh Lynn was trying right there for the Greyhounds was to simply seize momentum in this football game. They got that touchdown. No way Kingsville would think they were gonna onside kick. Maybe they could have marched down for another touchdown. Now it's a situation where the momentum could turn around much more quickly. 
for the Javelinas if they marched down and scored. Bedford, the right flat pass to Robert Armstrong. And boy, were there a bunch of Greyhounds over there. Give defensive credit to Tanner Melson, Bracy McCoy. Saw both numbers 92 and number one over there. That was the right flat pass. Looking for their top wide receiver, Robert Armstrong, but he lost a yard. It'll be second and 11. Bedford again. Looking this time for Clyde Lee. Lee goes high and knocked away from the ball by Kevin Reeves. Look at Reeves make the stop here. Lee reaches. Reeves hit him fairly. That was in the chest. That could have been one of those targeting situations where if he'd put his head down and hit him with the helmet, they'd have thrown the flag. But, well, I'm sure glad they've made that change in college football. We're keeping guys a little more healthy, I hope. Monstrous play in this football game right here. Big play, third and 11. Kingsville trying to convert. Bedford fires it up for grabs and we'll get a flag. That is going to be interference. I think probably a justifiable call against Marcus Engelman. Engelman is a true freshman out of Las Cruces, number 18. The 5'7", 170 pounder, playing man-to-man -man defense on that left sideline. Bedford with the pass and uh, no question he was pushing off as he was guarding C.J. Griggs. Griggs caught the first two passes of the ball game for Bedford. Bedford's now 10 of 18 passing for 68 yards. Well, that onside kick now looks as if it may backfire a little bit on the Greyhounds because the field position has allowed the Javelinas a quick opportunity to maybe forge right back into the lead. Nickelford is back in there. You notice him with the long hair just to the right of the quarterback. Gets the football. Shackelford trying to turn the corner on the left side. Outstanding defense. Well, a lot of other guys are going to get credit for the tackle, but the credit for that play right there belongs to Bracy McCoy, number 92. Look at Bracy McCoy, good shot. Great camera work, guys, on Bracy McCoy. Watch what he does. He bollockses this play up. Or I thought that was the replay. We were ready to go very quick back to the line of scrimmage. Bedford fires, and that's enough for a first down. Now that's unusual. They have not jumped to the line of scrimmage, the Javelinas, that quickly. But that time after that fine defensive play by McCoy, they came back quickly. Bedford with the pass to set up a first down. They are at the 23-yard line. Shackelford breaks a tackle. Check it. This isn't Shackelford. It's a touchdown for the Javelinas. That's Anthony Washington. Anthony Washington. Washington has had some of their bigger plays of the year. I told you Washington got that first touchdown of the year. Washington was set up just to the left of the quarterback. Perfect blocking on the right side. Nobody touched him, and Washington rambles for the score. Bedford had thrown that pass completion to Armstrong for 11 yards. Then Washington rambles. I'll get the official yards. Let's see, it'd be the 24, so it was a 24-yard touchdown. So very, very quickly, that onside kick definitely backfired, and Kingsville pushes themselves back into the lead at 
Hey, we're back live at uh, Eastern New Mexico. Let me run down that drive for you. After that onside kick went awry, the last three or four plays Actually, the last two plays were all that you needed. They marched down. They got that uh, pass interference call. That was probably the most important play. Bedford's pass incomplete to Griggs, but the uh, penalty called on Engelman set it up at the 35. Bedford then a completed pass to Armstrong for 11 yards, and then Anthony Washington got the 24-yard touchdown run and the ensuing kickoff return coming from the far left side for the Greyhounds. Breaking one tackle and then knocked out of bounds is Jamaric Tucker. Tucker, the freshman out of Lubbock, Texas. And all of a sudden, this game has started to open up a little bit. A game that was very, very close to the vest, very uh, defensive-oriented game in the first half. Our halftime score, Kingsville, Leading at three to nothing, Eastern New Mexico came out with a very, very impressive drive to open the second half and took the lead of 7-3. Then after Eastern New Mexico took the 7-3 lead, they attempted the onside kick recovered by Kingsville and the Javelinas with a very, very impressive drive capped off by a 25, 24-yard touchdown run by Anthony Washington. So now it is a 10-7 Kingsville lead, and the Greyhounds will try to respond. This is Burma handing it off to Long. Long has been a workhorse. He now has carried 11 times for 41 yards. Quarterback comparisons, Burma, in that last drive was almost perfect. Burma on the ball game now. You get a good look at uh, Christian Long. As I said now, up to 11 carries. Burma is 10 of 11 passing for 85 yards. Motion coming left to right. Burma will keep it himself and get about four to the 40. Burma. 10 of 11, long, 11 carries for 43 yards rushing. Jordan Wells has uh, carried four times for 26. That is enough for the first down. First and 10, again for the Greyhounds. Elon Spite goes in motion from left to right. He'll always come back, reset, and is he going in motion again? Not this time. Long again. Met right in the hole by Robert Williams. Robert Williams pops up after that tackle. Look at big number two. Number two for the Javelinas is a good one. He had eight tackles last week in that loss against North Alabama. Has 44 stops on the year. 6'3", 263 pound performer out of Dallas. Only one for Long right there, so it's second and nine. Long becoming a workhorse, gets another carry. That's his 13th carry of the ball game. Give him about five, so it's gonna be third and a long three. Spite again in motion. Burma will reset Long in the yellow shoes behind him. Long now has 13 carries for 50 yards rushing. Spite gets the pitch. Outstanding Havelina defensive play by Mark Severe. We've called his name a couple of times today. The junior defensive back out of San Antonio. Look at him, number 41. Good job. Severe comes in. That's his, uh, came into the contest with 48 tackles on the season. And for the Greyhounds, uh, the drive stalls, and Anthony Torres will check in. He had a 56-yarder at Incarnate Word earlier this year. Got to be careful of this. Sort of a 
Well, that really was an unorthodox punt, but a nice job. It rolls all the way down to the 25. And the Javelinas will come back offensively now, leading it 10 to seven. We roll to the 4.15 mark of quarter number three. Both starting quarterbacks have gone all the way. Number eight in white to the left of your screen right there. Checks back in for the Javelinas. That's Caleb Bedford, the true freshman. 11 of 19 passing for 79 yards. Direct handoff for the Javelinas to Greg Petrie. Petrie uh, probably lost a yard. Some of the numbers on the season. Those were season numbers for you coming in for the two respective quarterbacks. That was a loss of uh, almost two for Petrie. Petrie now has carried eight times for 35 yards. Bedford will fake and go for everything. How in the world did Patrick LaFleur get so wide open? If Patrick LaFleur had been able to catch that football, he would have been able to run for the next day and a half. You see him at the bottom of your screen. He simply ran by the defender. He was 15 yards in the open, and the ball went over his head. For the Greyhounds, that appeared, that might have been Connor Brenton. I think that was Brenton made a mistake there. Boy, they dodged a bullet. Third and 12, they'll try it again, and they may go for the same play, and he's open again. Wide open is C.J. Griggs, and Griggs not able to hold on. They tried the same th thing in effect, the fly pattern down the right sideline. Darylin McLeod is the defender. Watch number two right there at the bottom of your picture. McLeod is the defender. He's a junior out of Albuquerque. Still had a step on him then. Well, actually, that was uh, Marcus Engelman who came back defensively. McLeod was the up guy on the front. So whereas for the majority of the Greyhound drive, they tried to control things on the ground, that Kingsville drive was marked by two bombs. That's the first time we've seen two just absolute, let's take it to the house, bombs for Bedford. Bedford's numbers drop now to 11 of 21 passing for 79 yards. Greyhounds will get it back depending on this bounce and the return. That could be a game changer right there for Kevin Reeves. <laughs> Kevin Reeves with just an absolutely superb return. Reeves cuts right. Nice left cut there. Reeves uh, with about a 35 yard return will get the official. Yeah, 37. I just got the official number. Reeves, that return is 37 yards all the way to the Kingsville 35. So the Greyhounds trailing by three, go back offensively, fumble again for the fifth time and this time they lose it, it appears. That's the fifth fumble. Now let's see, nope, I think the officials have said they kept it. Woo, that's scary. Don't know if we've got it, don't know if we've got it on replay. Fumble wide right there. Boy, that sure looked like the opportunity for the Javelinas to get it, but the Greyhounds. The Greyhounds did retain possession, but that is fumble number five. Did you hear what I said? That is fumble number five on the day for the Greyhounds. They've only lost one, but boy, I'll tell you, that's scary. Burma, pocket drop. The completion for a first down to the 22. 
Nice pitch and catch there, and that's Jacob Johnson. Jacob Johnson, he has become the favorite target of Jeremy Burma. That is his sixth catch now. That is six catches already for Johnson. Burma, option pitch. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! That's Elon Spite. Elon Spite, and back and forth we go. Spite, before that, had six carries for just 22. He got 22 on this one alone. So back and forth we go. We've traded leads three different times here in the third quarter. And the conversion is no good. So Mitchell Cox having a rough afternoon. Missed a field goal and now misses that conversion but it uh, is still a field goal lead uh, for the Javelinas. They've taken the 13-10 advantage. Kickoff return for Texas A&M Kingsville. The Javelinas get a Joe Crow return. Crow had an 87-yard kickoff return last week in their loss against North Alabama. Well, scoring in the contest. Kingsville got a field goal at halftime. They led it 3-0. Then uh, Eastern New Mexico went ahead seven to three with a uh, Lawrence five yard touchdown run, 559 remaining in the third quarter. Very quickly, Kingsville comes back and gets that Washington 24 yard touchdown ramble. A five play drive that took a minute 44. They went back ahead 10 seven. Then a very impressive drive for Eastern New Mexico. Three play drive. After a fumble, 35 yards, 52 seconds. Spite gets the 22-yard touchdown ramble. Under pressure, Bedford has to throw that one away. Outstanding defensive pressure for the Greyhounds, and you get a very good look right there at uh, Christopher Barnard. The big linebacker, senior out of Melrose, New Mexico, 33 stops on the year coming in. He's got four sacks this year, was trying to get another one there. Big third and nine play for Bedford here. This again is Bernard running after him. Up for grabs and the interception. Boy, you gotta credit the pass rush there. For the Greyhounds, that's Kevin Reeves. But watch this pressure, and again, look at number 52. That's Bernard putting the pressure on Bedford. Throws it up for grabs, a broken pattern, and Kevin Reeves says, come to Papa. Kevin Reeves. Outstanding camera work there, guys, and you get a good look at Mr. Reeves. 34 tackles on the year. The junior defensive back out of Albuquerque. Eastern New Mexico has the lead and now they've got the football back. 
Long has been a workhorse, but he runs right into the waiting arms of big Zane Brown. Brown coming into the game with 38 tackles, number 99 for Kingsville. No game there, and again, you see how the Javelinas would love to keep this football on the ground. I don't mean literally, they've fumbled it five times. I mean, keep running the football and control the clock. Fake motion, give it to Long again. He is becoming the workhorse as we told you. That's his 16th carry of the day. Back to back runs for Long. He lost a couple, then he gained a couple. Christian Long now, 16 carries for, I think he's up to 49 yards if they give him two there. No, they gave him four. So Long has 16 carries for 51 yards. Third and eight. Let's call it third and a long eight. Jeremy Berna almost throws an interception and they'll have to punt it away. You see the punting team coming on for the Greyhounds. To the right of your screen is Anthony Torres. Eastern New Mexico now with 237 yards of total offense. The uh, Javelinas have 181 yards of total offense, but the Javelinas as we go to the final seconds of the third quarter, have a chance now to establish uh, an offensive drive to retake the lead. It has been a back and forth tennis match here in quarter number three. We started the quarter with Kingsville winning three to nothing. Eastern New Mexico took a 7-3 lead. Then Kingsville took a 10-7 lead. Now Eastern New Mexico gets the 13-10 advantage after a missed conversion, and here is the final play of the third quarter. This is Bedford. Bubble screen left side, it'll maybe pick up three or four as the clock expires. We'll take just a little break as they rotate ends of the field. We're going to the fourth quarter. Greyhounds lead the Javelinas 13-10. We're ready to go in quarter number four. We got a good one here from a Blackwater Draw in white, in case you're joining us late. The Texas A&M University Kingsville Javelinas in green are the Greyhounds of Eastern New Mexico. Eastern New Mexico is winning at 13 to 10. I'm waiting to see where Shackelford has been. Shackelford was their workhorse uh, early on for the Javelinas, direct handoff uh, instead to Greg Petrie. Petrie and Shackelford has shared the backfield periodically. Number 88 coming to the tight end side here for the Javelinas is uh, Andrew Shows. That gain uh, will make it third and three. Bedford. At the top of your picture, you see the coaches, you see the coaches uh, signaling the plays in. 
Very big defensive play for the Greyhounds. Offensive play for the Javelinas. Can they convert? Bedford in trouble. They're going to sack him. Coming up with the football. He won't have possession, but that's Christopher Bernard. He has four sacks on the year. He may get credit for that one. Christopher Bernard, the big linebacker, senior out of Melrose, New Mexico, making Bedford pay. And Bernard was on the backside, then comes up from the backside and helps out as Joshua Bounds was there as well, the redshirt sophomore out of Dripping Springs, Texas. It'll force a Havelina punt. We had a great return a minute ago for uh, Kevin Reeves. Can he do it again? Reeves 35-40. Reeves break a tackle. One man to beat. One man to beat. That could be a game changer right there. But there is a flag. There is yellow on the field. It's coming back. An official is standing at the 38-yard line. That looked pretty, but all it was was uh, something that looked nice. It doesn't count. Great camera work, guys. And we'll be able to watch this. It's exciting, but, you know, that may be where the penalty was right there. I think so. That was an illegal block in the back. Reeves to midfield, breaks two tackles. Yeah, I think we caught the penalty there. So instead of having the football at the Havelina 22, is that where he went down? Right at the 21. Instead of having the football at the 21, the Greyhounds will take over at their own nine yard line. So that is uh, 30, that's about a 71 yard differential about a 71 yard differential from where they could have taken over possession of the football. Jeremy Burma flushed out of the pocket. Nice pass. All the way out to the 40 yard line. For the Greyhounds, that's Aaron Johnson. Aaron Johnson getting a great Jeremy Burma completion here. And the official spot, the 40 yard line, first and 10 at the 40, Burma again would like now to control the clock. Long with his 17th carry. Johnson and you say, which one? Jeremy Burma is now 12 of 14 passing. Jacob Johnson has caught six balls. Aaron Johnson has caught three. Gain of two on the last long run. Christian Long had a two yard gain. So now Long is up to 17 carries for 53 yards. It has been tough, tough going, but he's gotten some big ones. Second and eight. Right flat passing ball picked off. Play of the game right there, Anthony Forker. My goodness. You talk about the game totally changing right here. Watch number five, jump, catch, and off he goes. <laughs> My goodness. Anthony Forker has totally changed the complexion of this game. Eastern New Mexico appeared as if they had an opportunity to possibly ramble for a score that could have doubled up the Javelinas. If Eastern New Mexico could have continued and scored, they would have made it 20 to 10. Now the Javelinas are in prime position and will they take advantage? Caleb Bedford, true freshman out of Houston, rolling left, firing. Javelina catch by Robert Armstrong for Armstrong. That is his sixth catch of the day, which becomes the 205th catch of his career. That's a gain of six. It'll be second and four. My goodness, what an amazing defensive play by Anthony Forker. That has totally changed the complexion of this contest. Bedford 
on second and six. He'll get the shotgun snap from the 24, roll right. And that one's picked off. That one is picked off. Back and forth we go. That's Daryl and McLeod. Daryl and McLeod, watch number two from the upper left of your picture. Dive and make the grab. He did make it. Just before it hit the green, green grass of home, McLeod earlier this year had a 33-yard pick six. What a great shot you get of that happy young man. Wow. Well, Matt Broussard is my producer here. At halftime, we were talking. He told me, Chris, you said this was going to be an exciting ball game. It hadn't been much in the first half. Well, since halftime, we have had ourselves a ball game. Up and down the field, good offense. Uh, and then defensively, just an amazing interception for the Javelinas by Anthony Forker that looked as if it were going to turn the game around. And two plays later, Daryl and McLeod picks one off for the Greyhounds. And now they've got another opportunity to try to salt this one away with a strong offensive drive. Some of the wide open football that we didn't have in half number one, we've got it now in the second half. Still great defense. Boy, did they string that out, the Javelinas. That was another fine defensive play by Anthony Forker, number five. We get a replay of this. Watch number five on the left of your screen. Shed is blocked, come off, and bollocks that play up totally and allow Lamont Hills to make the play. My goodness. Well, as I said, we're getting into crunch time now as we head for the final 10 minutes of this contest. Three-point advantage for Eastern New Mexico University. The Greyhounds have the football, but they look at a third and 12. Burma's got to fire long, try to get the first down. It's not to be. They'll have to kick it away. Well, we're getting to where we got sort of a white knuckle, edge of your seat, fingernail biting time now. This is going to be fun, the final 10 minutes plus of the fourth quarter of this one. Both these ball clubs trying to really turn things around a little bit. Kingsville, of course, as we've annotated for you, have lost four in a row. First time they've lost four in a row in 20 years. For the Greyhounds, this is Torres with the punt. It'll get a propitious bounce. That's Robert Armstrong taking a hit. And boy, you can start to feel the electricity a little bit here. Both teams were sort of feeling each other out. Armstrong stood up straight and then poo. That was uh, that was a that was a five car collision on I-25 right there. And boy, you hope we it it looks like one of the Greyhounds was uh, One of the worst for wear on that hit. Armstrong was being stood up straight, and a lot of times you just say, boy, get to the ground so you don't have a collision like that. I think it will really appear that two of the Greyhounds ran into each other. So we're going to go to the final 10 minutes and 7 seconds of this one. Eastern New Mexico does have the 13-10 advantage, but the Javelinas trailing by those three points have the football. Again, Jeremy Burma's passing statistics, 12 of 16. Now we're going to get to see who that is down there. The trainer's doing a good job. We're seeing all sorts of movement, which is the first thing you look for. You always want to make sure the arms and the legs are moving. So that looks good, but he did take a shot. Bedford will now have the opportunity for Kingsville to go on offense. Bedford is 13 of 26 passing, just 89 yards total, He's thrown two interceptions. Petrie, 38 yards rushing, Washington 33, and Shackelford 23. It's been a very defensive-oriented ball game. 
all of the fans in the stands and the players. Uh, well, that looks like more of a uh, left arm injury. And for the Greyhounds, that is uh, Charlie Saavedra. Well, he got his bell rung, but he looks all right. Everything is moving. We'll look for number 33 in this picture. He was the one coming in late, I believe. Yeah, and I think he got his right arm caught underneath. You know, he may have had a shoulder separation. I've seen that before, and you pop it in, and then you walk off, and everything's okay. It's scary at first. All right, Havelinas are trailing. Kingsville down by three. Bedford just a 50% completion percentage and not much yardage. 13 of 26 for 89 so far. Will fire right side, incomplete. Looking for his favorite receiver in the ball game so far. That is Robert Armstrong, been his favorite receiver for a long time and all of the quarterbacks. You know, this has got to be a happy day for David Calloway simply in the fact that he's had one quarterback go the whole game. He has started three different quarterbacks this year and four have played. Bedford's gone all the way in this one. Armstrong has caught six balls for 44 yards, but that completion was not to be. Again, wonderful Greyhound defense. As the Javelinas try to work it to Greg Petrie again. Petrie has carried it more than anybody else. That's his 10th carry. But I tell you, the Greyhound defense has really risen to the challenge. We go to the final nine and a half of this football game. And another big third down play. Third and 10. Javelinas have the football. They trail by three. Bedford, the option, wants to run for 10 himself to get the first down. I think he was down before that ball came free. He took a shot. The officials say no, he was down, but he did not get the 10 yards necessary. It was third and 10. There's the line of scrimmage. He gets five, maybe six. And you saw the hit that he took from um, Abraham Maiga. For the Javelinas, this will be Stoll trying to punt it away, and the clock becomes a big, big, big factor in the contest now if the Greyhounds could establish something offensively. That's a delay of game penalty. Javelinas now look at a fourth and nine. Stoll will put foot to football at about the 30 yard line, gets a good kick and a good roll. And the Greyhounds will have to take over about 90 yards from pay dirt. Eastern New Mexico 13, Kingsville 10. Back on uh, will come Jeremy Burma and the Greyhound offense. Well, if you're a uh, fan of high-scoring offensive football, the third quarter was fun for you in this one. But uh, so far, quarters one, two, and four have been very defensive-oriented, and I'm telling you, the coaches have got to be proud of some of the great defensive plays. We saw one of the finest defensive plays of the year for Anthony Forker 
jumping up and intercepting a ball from Burma. Thought that it would turn the game around. Possibly for uh, Kingsville. Two plays later for the Greyhounds, Daryl and McLeod makes an interception. And so far in the fourth quarter, it's been the defense that has uh, rised and shined, if you will, after we had three touchdowns between the two teams in the third quarter. So a 13-10 advantage for the Greyhounds as they go back on offense. Again, the option attack results in the pitch to Jordan Wells. Wells had 132 yards rushing last week against Northeastern, had 146 yards rushing with a 64-yard touchdown ramble earlier this year against Sol Ross, but so far today, he just has 32 yards rushing. That spite carry right there is his ninth carry, and that's enough for a first down. You see Jeremy Burma, number 15, getting his instructions. Spite, number seven, Long, number six, Wells, number 28. Those are the three guys in that triple option attack. Burma says, hey, it's fine with me if we take 35 seconds every time we get set to run the ball. Let's take about a seven minute drive and score. Not that way, Spite stopped at the line of scrimmage. 13-10, your Eastern New Mexico advantage, seven and a half remaining in the ball game. So obviously they'd love to take about a seven minute drive here and just keep the clock rolling, keep the football away from the Javelinas the rest of the way. As it becomes a possibility, I do remind you, the last time Eastern New Mexico defeated Kingsville was five games ago in uh, 2006. They beat them 37-14. Outstanding ramble for the Greyhounds there for Elon Spite. Well, with that run, Spite becomes the leading rusher in the ball game for the Greyhounds. With that run, Spite now has 11 carries for 57 yards. There is a flag down, and are they going to take some of this yardage away? No. That is a five-yard penalty that will hurt the Greyhounds, but that does not affect Spite's run. So isn't it amazing? It's just by one yard. Spite. Number seven for the Greyhounds as you watch a very, very unhappy Coach Lynn. Spite has 11 carries now for 57 yards and Christian Long has 18 carries for 56 yards. But this is exactly what the Greyhounds want to do. Keep the ball on the ground. Keep that clock rolling through all of this. We're down to less than six and a half minutes remaining. It's Spite again. Well, he's feeling it. That is a gain of about seven. It is going to be second. Yep, second down and about uh, seven. Spite. Took care of one of his own coaches, I think, on that. Watch that. No, that was the cameraman. Cameraman or waterman or two cheerleaders or whatever. Just don't knock the hot dog guy out of commission. Second and seven. That almost looked like a horse collar, and there they're finally going to call it. They did call it. They just called the horse collar tackle on uh, Brandon James. We're going to get another look at it, but anytime you reach in the back of those shoulder pads, that's a horse collar tackle. That'll be 15, I believe. Yep, that's 15 yard penalty. We're gonna watch it again. They call it a horse collar tackle. This is Burma, the quarterback, keeping it himself. Watch 35, grab him by the back of the shoulder pads and sorry, you can't do that. That is a big penalty. A bunch of things happen there. They get the ball across midfield do the Greyhounds. They've got a three-point lead. They're trying to beat this Javelina team 
for the first time in five games. They get across midfield. The clock is rolling. They're going to try to keep it on the ground. You're almost sure. Spite again, jitterbugging for five yards possibly. For the Greyhounds, as they try to get this monkey off their back, they have not beaten Kingsville, as we said, since they won 37-14 in 2006. This, if the Greyhounds could do it, would be their third win in a row, and the Javelinas are in danger now of losing five in a row. Second and seven, Burma watches Spite go in motion from left to right. Get a reset of the play now. They again are trying to take as much time off the clock as possible. Already on this drive, three and a half minutes have gone by. Burma has it, the pitch. First down ramble for the Greyhounds, Jordan Wells. Well, this is a textbook offensive drive to try to win a ball game. So far, this has been a textbook offensive drive to try to win this game. Jordan Wells, you get a good shot of him as he goes out in favor of Cameron Michael. Nice pitch. You have to know exactly when to release that football on the pitch. You've got that option, obviously. That's the name of the play of cutting back inside or pitching it out there. Four Wells, that was a 10-yard ramble all the way down to the Kingsville 33. Burma rolls right. You say, well, we didn't get much that time. You know what you got? If you're a Greyhound fan, you got about 45 seconds is what you got because the clock is now under four minutes to play. This really, this drive started with just under eight minutes left in the ballgame and the Greyhounds leading it 13 to 10. Eastern New Mexico has that narrow field goal advantage. It could have been four, but a conversion was missed. They're just trying to run clock. This is Spite, the leading rusher today. Not much, and now they're looking at a massive third down play right here. Off the bottom of the pile for the Javelinas. Slow to get up. Brandon James, he's played a good ball game. Yeah, you know, you knew that Eastern New Mexico wasn't about to call timeout, but Kingsville realizing they're down three and the Greyhounds are on the roll. They wanted to stop the clock with 3.23 remaining from the plains of Eastern New Mexico. Well, the clock cannot move quickly enough for Greyhound fans. That's what they're rooting for. Big play here, third and eight. They're trying to keep this drive alive. They have taken about five minutes off the clock, the Greyhounds, in this drive, but it'll stop unless they convert this third and eight. And do, and they do, and they do. Jeremy Burma to Jacob Johnson. Burma, Burma does a great job of buying time here. Looking left, Johnson open left flat at about the 18, catches first down. Two things happen there. They get the first down, but they run more time off the clock and actually now four running plays into the line of scrimmage would get the ball down or get the clock down to less than a minute with a three point lead. They are definitely going to keep the ball on the ground here, you know. Greyhounds trying to break a losing streak against the Javelinas. And a little extracurricular activity there at the end of the play. 
Spite got three down to the Kingsville 16. Spite now, the leading rusher in the ball game for Eastern New Mexico. That was his 15th carry for 73 yards. And as we told you, the clock rolls down under 219 actually now. Burma taking his time. Power, power backfield behind him now. This is Spite again, but a whistle sounds. Just a short time out taken by the Brain Trust for the Greyhounds. Obviously their goal right now is to simply get the final two minutes and five seconds of this football game out into the uh, never, never land. Just get that clock. They'd be happy to win this thing 13-10. Now a secondary goal would be to try to punch a touchdown in and put the gate out of reach, but they will not try anything fancy here. They have already, the Greyhounds, already have fumbled five times today in this ball game. They've only lost one of them. But a turnover here would break the heart of everybody concerned with the Eastern New Mexico program. This is second and actually seven for Burma. 2.09 left officially in the ball game. Burma reestablishing things again, another flag. And is that a penalty? It is. That's going to be a procedure penalty. False start? Yeah. False start. Boy, that's one thing, one thing you did not want now. You want the clock continuing to roll. I was just about to make the statement, you know this is going to be a running play. You know this is going to be a running play, yet in this triple option, and they're going back, they're going back to that power backfield set now. Actually, shotgun snap to Burma. He is going to run it right up the gut. He took a hit. Wow. Burma took a hit right there from Brandon James, but he'll pop up, be okay, and we're under two minutes to play. Well, the clock on the scoreboard, our clock is moving on your screen, but actually the scoreboard was stopped at 2.01. Kingsville stopped the clock at 2.01 remaining. And we look at a very, very big uh, third down play coming. And we'll wait for the officials to sort this out. On the sideline marker, it is third and nine. Now they do have it on the scoreboard correct as well. Okay, it is third and nine. I had it right. We didn't have it right on our monitor as well, but all right, it's all coming down to this. It's all coming down to this because technically, if they convert, technically, if the Greyhounds convert, you see a, a worried David Calloway here, the defensive coordinator, head coach. He got to make sure that you know your defensive assignments. If the Greyhounds convert right here, they could probably run the clock out and win the football game. Do you run, do you pass? This is what it's all about. Burma under center, third down snap. Going to pass, right flat passing. Wells will not get the first down. Outstanding defensive work for Lamont Hills. All right, so Kingsville. That is their final timeout. So Kingsville does not have any more timeouts. Now it becomes interesting. Watch this pass to Wells coming out of the backfield, not fooled at all and making a textbook tackle is Lamont Hills. You know, I, I watch pro football three or four games every week. Very rarely do you see a tackle that good, you know? Even the pros, they just don't tackle crisply. That was a textbook tackle right there for Hill. So now you do get the field goal attempt for the Greyhounds. Mitchell Cox 
will try it. Two of four this year. The wind is slowing down a little bit. This could make it a six point game. Snap, hold, kick, long enough. Did not get it, did not get it. And now a field goal for Kingsville could tie the game. Obviously a touchdown wins it for Kingsville, but they have no timeouts left. Kingsville has no timeouts left. That's one of the main things you have to remember here in the final minute 49. Well, this has been a game that has been uh, devoid of any wild up and down the field scoring and excitement in that regard, but the final half, this has been fun. It has been exciting. And if you're watching down in that South Texas Kingsville area, you got a shot. Is this a new quarterback for the final drive? It is. Dean Brantley, fire it left side. Havelinas. Greg Petrie out of the backfield. Yeah, that is Dean Brantley, the senior out of Missouri City, Texas, has come in. New quarterback for the Javelinas. Stops the clock, minute 44 remaining, gain of three at second and six. He'll do it again on that sideline and stop the clock again. Javelina pass completion to C.J. Griggs. That's Griggs' third catch. He caught the first two patches of the ball game. Griggs caught the first two passes of the game. That's the first catch since then. Third and four. Now it becomes mandatory for the Javelinas to get the first down here. Incomplete and it's fourth down. They're gonna have to go for it. They tried to get Griggs again. They tried to get Griggs again. Clock stops obviously on the incomplete pass. Nice defense for the Greyhounds by Kevin Reeves. Uh, Reeves over to knock it away. Crowd is into it. Fourth and four, Havelinas trying to avoid a five game losing streak, their first five game losing streak in 20 years. The fourth down play. Are they gonna try to go for everything? Incomplete! It appears that the Greyhounds, if there are no flags, uh, it appears that the Greyhounds could hold on and win this thing. The attempted pass for the Javelinas. Was Dean Brantley trying to find Armstrong? This is Brantley. He wants Armstrong, their leading receiver. The ball was there, but so was the defender. And it appears uh, that the Javelinas uh, could simply keep the ball on the ground, run the clock out, and get their third victory in a row. And they have only one conference defeat. They are technically still in the conference title race. Javelinas cannot stop the clock, and it's rolling down now. It'll go down to approximately 50 seconds before they need to snap it again. This could be a good one for Eastern New Mexico University. The homestanding Greyhounds have dodged several bullets here. They're gonna try to watch the play clock and game clock. Game clock down to 10 seconds now. The play clock down to seven seconds, game clock down to 53. Burma will kneel one more time and all they need to do is that same procedure one more time. They call it the victory formation. It appears Eastern New Mexico University will go to four and three and two and one in Lone Star Conference play. As we said, technically still in the title race the Javelinas will lose their fifth game in a row. And they break a long losing streak, Eastern New Mexico does, to the Javelinas. I have been asked to pick a player of the game. 
I'm thinking about spite. You know, you talk about defensive players as well. If I could analyze anything, Jeremy Burma is going to end up with uh, 14 of 18 passing for 144 yards. Spite was their leading rusher, Eastern New Mexico, with 73 yards. Johnson made some great catches. Jacob Johnson, seven catches for 80 yards. Uh, probably, if I picked anybody, Jeremy Burma would be my player of the game. Burma did a great job at the quarterback slot. Eastern New Mexico has won three games in a row. They go to a positive record at four and three, two and one in Lone Star Conference play. Excellent effort for both ball clubs, but uh, Eastern New Mexico gets the victory. Kingsville has now lost five games in a row for the first time in 20 years. Jim Barton's production crew works with us. Matt Broussard, my executive producer here that did a great job on the board. All the people at uh, both schools that helped us with statistics and numbers, we thank them as well. We've loved bringing it to you. We've got a couple more later this year. We'll have another broadcast as far as uh, championships with volleyball and soccer as well for Stan Wagner, commissioner of the Lone Star Conference. We remind you, Eastern New Mexico gets the victory over Kingsville, 13 to 10 from Blackwater Draw. Chris Needham, so long everybody.